there we go. Hello. Hey, Sudas! How you doing? I'm trying to figure out what's the easiest way to do this. Should I... Maybe... Discord screen share? Let's see. I could do a Discord screen share real quick. That would work. Let me see if that is easier. Yeah, I can just go... Let me change my uh, my background to green real quick. Okie dokie. We're at 6 hours, 22 minutes, and 18 seconds, by the way. And the hype train has started! We are 3 minutes away from the deadline of this hype train. And we are 33% of the way to a level 2 hype train! Boop, 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 As Phoebe would say. Nice Don't worry about Share. Actually, no, I don't do share screen. I do turn video and I set gonna, the video. I know there's double of me right now. Ready? YouTube Studio Cam, why are you why are you broken? Wait, Hobbit, did you just donate a subby to a person named Meat? Is that a person? Is that a real person? <laughs> it, you mu it must let you because there's a real person with that, with that name, right? <laughs> meat. Thank you for donating one to Meat. All right, for some reason. Let's take a look. It's looking like a green blob right now. Yeah, Unity it's has not, not started sending image data. Did you turn on your virtual camera? Maybe sometimes I it does that. I think I have forgotten how to do that. <laughs> uh, let's see. I use it once in a blue moon, and now I'm desperately trying to remember <laughs> how to do it. Wait, are you? Is this in Wait, VTube Studio? Activate virtual webcam. Oh, I there see. we go. Oh, no, it's not. It's 3D. It's your 3D one. Okay. This, uh, this is a this is a 2D one. Wait, this is 2D? You yeah, look so 2D. bubbly. Oh my god. I know, right? What the hell? Such dimension. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys in a second. Give me give me a sec. What the fuck? How do you look yeah. so so animated and so fucking round <laughs> everywhere? Holy uh, shit! Shill and boom! Thank you so much for reading! Hey Ooh. creatures! Shoe mice are here. I love shoe mice. Go, 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 read. Hello, welcome readers. Uh, uh. Let me let me pull this screen up so you guys welcome can see the, the person that I'm with. Suck my clit. Suck my clit, motherfuckers. That's right, Jumbucha. Thank you so much for following. Thank you. You're playing welcome Elden Ring. You basic fucking bitch. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Hello, welcome! Suffering, apparently. Hello, Amatan WD! Hello, Ryuden14! Hello, Mingu! Booba chin. I don't know what you're talking about. This is just how my chin looks. Don't call it a booba. They're, they're chin stickles. It might wiggle a little bit like a booba, though. <laughs> Hello! We're doing a birthday anniversary subathon right now. One, the other, both, or all of them at the same time. We're Welcome doing, <laughs> yes, like it's the same day for me. It's the day the that day. my VTuber was debuted, and uh, it's the day when my VTuber was born. So that's where that's from. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me. I am still trying to figure out how to put you on the screen. <laughs> I'm trying to do this properly. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I just need to. <laughs> I'm It'll totally work. competent. I promise. Also, I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. I'm glad you like my chin. I like my chin too. I'm glad that you guys aren't judgery dudes and like <laughs> judgery based off of how and jiggly my chin is them. and how big my chin is. There's some people that think that chin size is important. I'm here to debate. <laughs> they must be. They must be big Family Guy fans. <laughs> Clearly. Oh, sorry. Give me one second. Let me just boop, boop, boop. Thank you guys so much for the hype train, by the way. Uh, it started right before you guys were here. Uh, we had a level one hype train with two subbies of 1,700 bits. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to move over here and I'm going to turn on the green screen. And I'm going to get you guys a raid song. I actually, I don't know if you saw this earlier, but I, I got a raid song. I commissioned a raid song, and now I have a raid song. 
I'm gonna play it for you guys. I am still trying to work out exactly how to add it properly Welcome to my stream. stream. Suck my clip. Suck my clip, motherfucker. Hello, best day at 184. Is it country it West? <laughs> 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 what? No, no, no. <laughs> Hello. All right, here's the raid song. Da -da -da. I'm gonna sing along to it. Welcome to the stream, stranger. You're invited to my team if you like danger. Spin fire with a little slice of loot. Shakir, check out my boba, dude. I am BB Chan the Dragon. See? Dragon, dragon not, not a fucking gremlin. And I'm a little, little white, but I'm really kawaii. To call me Senpai I am Mimi Chan the Dragon Welcome to the stream Thank you so much for reading If you want to the club Drop the sub, drop a follow for me This is not a fucking cult If you came for that, you can all go home Punch your ass in a million ways Might be crass, but I'll make your day Won't clean my room, no fuck, no way So do I click, can't tell me what to do Okay, great soda in my veins Enjoy the stream. Enjoy the stream. Bitch. <laughs> so there were two separate experiences there. <laughs> <laughs> there was the experience of hearing it on the stream, because I would turn it I, I turned it on so I could hear the music. And then I would turn it <laughs> off to just hear you singing it with none of the background music. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot. That's true. You can probably you can hear it the other way. <laughs> Thank you! What is it that on my chin? Um well so sometimes when people go through a interesting time in their life um, called puberty, they sometimes produce growths in different parts of their bodies. <laughs> One a daddy chin and a mommy chin love each other very much. <laughs> this is the daddy chin. This is the mommy chin. You know, and when you shake, shake, shake them, they make more chins. <laughs> Shoot them long. Thank you so much. Have a good rest. Thank you so much for reading me. Thank you, thank you, thank you! Carthax, so that is what's on my chin. I hope you have a lovely rest, Yulin. I, I hope you had a lot of fun playing Elden Ring. If anybody wants to stay and hang out with me, that'd be really cool. We're doing a capped subathon right now. Uh, we have a packed program. And uh, if you guys are interested in the subathon details, you can use exclamation mark subathon to bring up that little tweet. That tells you all the information, including a whole schedule uh, and the rewards for different amounts that you give, as well as the cumulative goals that will be given for the for the for the community. Uh, as you can see, Hype Scotch is a member of the community that really wants a made VV stream, which I'm telling you guys is not happening. That's why I made the goal so high, because you pathetic little mortals cannot reach that goal. <laughs> In case and you guys are wondering, they prove you wrong. <laughs> nah, nobody has that much dough. Aww, Who's gonna drop like two hundred fifty thousand uh, bits? No, that's not gonna happen. Scotch. He's literally poor. Yeah, poor little hype scotch is poor. Mm. <laughs> 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 trying to think if anybody's dropped anywhere near that amount on stream. I'm like, no, no, they have not. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> it's a not. stretch, and it's a stretch for a reason. It's a huge stretch because it's not happening. I purposely calculated statistically. It will not happen. That's right. All right, sir, I just need check to your check bank accounts and pay your rent first. <laughs> Go pay your rent. But wait, if they live here, isn't their rent the sub? Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> we don't need to talk about this. No, 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 no. You, you, you don't live rent here. You're not renting space here. Don't worry uh, about it. Oh, I'm and depending on the anybody. goals, you can do some things to affect my stream. So, for example, on the left here, someone wanted me to put a magic wand on my bed. So that's what we did. That's a magic wand. It does magic tricks, if you will, in my bed. Uh, it's a very <laughs> lovely wand. <laughs> Jury's out. Jury's out on definitions. <laughs> so right now we're at the section where we are talking with Sudis, one of my big, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Sudis. I think he is very knowledgeable on a lot of different topics that really, really interest me. And today I want to get him to kind of basically lecture me on what's going on. Because like he is, 
I'm like, I don't read newspapers. So I was thinking Sudas can explain to simple little smooth brain me about what is going on in the U.S. right now. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, I'm Dino. So yeah, we're going to be talking about, in particular, well, what I'm interested in. Uh, if you know anything about this. Of course, if you don't, that's fine. We can make up shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking we could talk about how uh, recently, uh, as you all know, Roe v. Wade was overturned. And that has had some interesting consequences in the U.S. Uh, yeah. I made a spoof video on this where since rape and um, incest are not exceptions in most states now, uh, for getting an abortion, that's kind of like a big win for incest. <laughs> so if you ever want to knock out that cousin, this is the time to do it. <laughs> Protect yourself with the sanctity of marriage or something. <laughs> even if you're not married, even if whatever, apparently as long as you inseminate, they have to bring it to term and raise that baby. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> big win for incest. Been... <laughs> Winsets. Hashtag Winsets. Uh, so what I actually want to talk about was, uh, so even more recently, I would say, what is it? It's either a few days or like a week ago. Uh, President Biden has released an executive order which i don't understand the ramifications of uh, I, can, I can get into that if you need okay to. that is exactly what i want to talk about so actually okay. i'm not gonna i'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about it too much i'm gonna let sudis uh give us some background on it because sudis is the uh, the most knowledgeable knowledgeable vtuber that i trust about these kinds of things so that feels like a mistake <laughs> <laughs> yeah probably <laughs> So I, I, I do need to correct one thing in the chat. Actually, uh, there are two states that incest is legal in, one of which is Rhode Island. That is true. It's New Jersey and Rhode it, Island. Yeah. Like it is. So, so it's like, it's not legal. No, 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 no. It's legal in two states. Mm -hmm. um, awkwardly, Alabama has some of the most restrictive. Uh, <laughs> yep. I they know, were just so like, this is, a, this is a problem. Stamp it out with the law. <laughs> um. But, 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 but on the, uh, on, on, on the topic of the, of the executive order, probably good to go into, into just a little bit of detail about what's happened and why first, uh, because I know that a lot of people, especially people who consume a lot of VTuber content, VTuber content's really, really good for escapism, right? It's like a, a whole nother yes. world you can sit in and just forget about every problem that exists outside of the four doors of your house, which is good. Like we all need that sometimes, but. Unfortunately, as a result, sometimes we get really, really insular and it's hard to cope with the fact that there's all this dumb shit happening outside. That's true. Um, so, so what's happened, obviously, the, the Supreme Court ruled and it was technically a 5-4 ruling, but it, realistically, it's a 6-3 ruling because it was one conservative judge going, eh, I don't know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> kind of, uh, but Roe v. Wade was overturned. Ro Roe v. Wade being the constitutional right to, uh, it's been interpreted as a constitutional right to an abortion. Um, realistically, mm -hmm. it was a constitutional right to privacy for, uh, AFAB bodies is what it mm -hmm. is, what it functionally was. Um, the reason it was that is the entire basis of the argument was on Amendment 14, which is our constitutional right to our own privacy, uh, something our government has been slowly eroding over time. If anybody's taken notice, it's 2001. Uh, yeah. But the uh, so this this created a couple of problems. One, um, the arguments for Roe v. Wade, the argument for personal privacy was always kind of a shaky. It was always kind of a shaky ground to run it on. But awkwardly, that entire argument was had with a conservative Supre majority Supreme Court. Sorry, I'm just going to interrupt you just very, very yeah. briefly. Uh, Honking Champion was saying that he feels so dumb listening to this, he doesn't know the terms. So I was okay. wondering, well, let's go back a little bit <laughs> and just back. talk a little bit about um, the different uh, things that are in play here. So you were talking about um, the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. Can you go into a little bit more detail about what that means about like privacy and our bodies and stuff like that? So the 14th amendment is, uh, that is the 13th amendment. I'm going to, I'm going to look it up. Is in, it 13th? Okay. In, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. 13th, okay. 13th, is, 13th is the one that abolished slavery. It's a different one. <laughs> so not the 
slavery one. Guys. Yeah, not the not slavery, the slavery one. one. Okay. <laughs> um, so there's multiple sections for the uh, 14th Amendment, but let me go ahead and pull it up here. The 14th Amendment uh, granted citizens all born or naturalized, including former enslaved people, uh, equal protection under the law. Uh, this was one of the three amendments passed during the Reconstruction era to abolish slavery. That was the original term, like equal protection under the law. Over time, that term has been reinterpreted to be uh, your personal privacy, like your right to your own privacy. Uh, this extends to things like uh, needing warrants to search your house, things like that. Oh. Um, the way this the way this works, it, it works this way for almost all amendments. So like what was considered freedom of speech in America 200 years ago is not what is considered freedom of speech now. What was considered uh, a right to bear arms in America 200 years ago is not the same thing as now. That's like, true. Right to bear arms originally was right to having a re well-regulated militia, which was handled by your your uh, state's cities. Whereas mm -hmm. now it's your individual it's about right individual to own a firearm. Gun rights, right? Yeah. So like that's a so when when it, when an amendment pops up and it says this is what this does over time, what that amendment encompasses tends to either increase or decrease, and the people who choose that are the Supreme Court. Um. The way our the way our government works in simple terms is we have an executive branch. That's where Biden is right now. That's the that's, that's the, the president. Presidency. The legislative branch. The that's Trump. your <laughs> <laughs> uh, legislative is like your House of Representatives, your Senate. These are the people who who Those are the people do your that votes. we vote for. That get, yeah, we vote. Um, we vote for into them. lawmakers. Uh, and then you have the judiciary branch. These are the judges. This is all the courts from like. You, the the court you had to walk into because mm -hmm. you you had a driving ticket all the way up to the Supreme Court uh, that all these decisions are being handed down on. That's all judiciary. So when an amendment extends, when that amendment means more than what it was originally intended, that's the Supreme Court looking at a court case that has been brought up to them and saying, OK, this thing here makes sense per a certain interpretation of that mm -hmm. law. Like if I said, uh, I have a right to privacy. One person might assume that that right to privacy means nobody can take what I view on the internet. And another person can say, well, no, there are terms and services for your browser that says that, uh, the things you view actually can be used by other countries. And that's where you get like one thing that's interpreted a different way to other people. You'll notice if you look at any Supreme court ruling, all the Supreme Court justices write a document, which is their justification for their decision. Each of them have mm -hmm. a different reason for uh, for voting a certain way on any constitutional amendment when they're trying to see, like, does this extend to a to a right to privacy? Does this extend uh, to this, that or the other? Each of them are going to have a different interpretation. Mm -hmm. So the reason uh, that we've had Roe taken away is we have more conservative judges who are further uh, to the right in the Overton window. Uh, so they're, they're what we call constitutional originalists. Um, a constitutional originalist is somebody whose interpretations of the Constitution or an amendment is going to be more along the lines of what the Founding Fathers intended and less along the lines of how we currently view things. So even though we had conservative justices under Nixon when Roe v. Wade was codified 50 years ago uh -huh. uh, and conservative justices now, the difference is, is those justices before weren't constitutional originalists the way that people like you know Amy Coney Barrett are. They're going to look at this and go, well, the founding fathers didn't care about abortion, so why should I? That's functionally how they're going to read it. Can you explain a little bit about um, the motivation behind being a constitutionalist originalist? So this this is like a, an argument that you get in uh, language all the time. Does a word mean what it was originally intended to mean when the word was coined? Or does the word mean what society has kind of accepted it to mean now? Uh, let's look at a term like idiot, right? Um, so idiot began as a medical diagnosis for someone, um, <laughs> as literally like a hundred years ago, Wait, yeah, a hundred years ago, you are, can you imagine a doctor <laughs> writing on, on your chart? Idiot. <laughs> you can't imagine that because 20 years ago, oh that's what God. we used the arsenal for. No, mm -hmm. really? 
Oh yes. my god. <laughs> so, oh my god. I didn't know you could be diagnosed an idiot. Okay, that's really interesting. <laughs> it was I think it was like if you had if you took an IQ test and you measured like under 70, you actually got a diagnosis of idiot. Oh my uh, god. What it was. So, oh, apparently Hawking knew that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So viewing how the Supreme Court looks at this is easier to view through the lens of language because we have the word idiot now idiot now just means i think you're stupid or that thing you did was idiotic like i i I think you shouldn't have done that there was a better thing you could have done but you're not clinically an idiot yeah it's a very (laughs) it's a very soft term now but a hundred years ago that was coined it was not a soft term a hundred years ago it was a medical diagnosis that affected your ability to get a job like it was a so oh, that was right. a term that was incredibly derogatory a hundred years ago, but over time the term has softened. A so if somebody's an originalist, they will say never use the term idiot. It has always meant this medical diagnosis and has a huge stigma attached to it. But somebody who just uses it in common parlance now, they're going to go, "What the hell are you talking about? That's not what we mean when we say idiot." Hmm. So would you say like the modern version is for like like retardation or something like that? We're like we're not supposed to use like retard it's this, or something. It's it's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing because that was a diagnosis as well. Um, and we still use that in uh, in medical terminology. So like if I like the the medical term for stopping a cancer from spreading through the body is literally to retard the cancer. Like that's the medical term for it. Um, oh. So like. We do still have like it's it's the same thing, but unlike idiot, there are still areas where we will use the term in uh, in medical speech that is perfectly applicable and still used today. And it doesn't carry the stigma there. Whereas like looking at somebody and just calling them the arse, they're like, yeah, that will probably somebody's going to feel a certain way about that. OK, wait a second. So now I'm thinking about, OK, this applied to being a constitutional originalist. Uh, to me, that sounds like. So, like, I'm trying to figure out, like, in terms of motivation-wise, uh, what would be the function of using the term like this? Is it to build, like, a consistent um, definition for people to follow in terms of, like, lawmaking? Is that, so, like, one of the motivations behind being, like, a constitutional originalist? It can depend. So, a constitutional originalist can really the reasons that they take it can be a variety of reasons. One of them can be, they truly believe that what America was at its founding is what America should have stayed, uh, oh, which is, okay. which is a very yikesy sense. position to take. Cause I can see a there lot of being things. a lot of pride for that time, uh, for yeah. the people, for the glory that was the USA during that time. It was very, yeah, <laughs> there, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of blind patriotism to that, perspective that ignores things that we did like we we were not a very functional nation at the time uh, but <laughs> like we we were we were we were literally built on the backs of slaves uh fun fact we never actually abolished slavery in the in the united states legally um <laughs> thanks I'm, for dropping that <laughs> i'm not kidding though like the uh the 13th a little amendment, tidbit there here we go the 13th amendment uh actually allows for one to be a slave as long as they have been uh put into a prison wait like you're kidding. I'm not kidding. If you read the 13th Amendment, the <sighs> amendment that banned slavery said specifically uh, that it allowed an exception as long as somebody was part of the prison system. Oh, my We've, God. We never technically fully abolished it. Oh, my God. Yep. It's a so this is a you can see how like when somebody when if one person says America abolished slavery. And then one person says, no, we didn't. These two people might mean the same thing and still (laughs) end up fighting because person A is like, no, we abolished it. Nobody works on plantations anymore. And then the uh, person B goes, but we have prisons and we have legal slavery in that. And the person A goes, yes, I agree with you. So they're both <laughs> saying the same thing, and now they're fighting, and now they're fighting. And yes, it is interesting. Okay, um, Squares Digital's is is correct. It is also meant to target poor people because um, your ability to avoid prison most of the time is based on your ability to do things like post bail, afford a good lawyer. Uh, uh, there's a financial. There's a financial, there's a financial factor. Yeah. Yeah. There's so a, a huge financial factor. factor. 
into whether or not you'll uh, you'll maintain being in a jail cell uh, and like how long you'll be in one and then whether or not you'll be able to fight to get out because like a public lawyer not most of the times a public lawyer is not going to get you off of of your case they're handling 15 of you they don't remember your name much less your case oh, um that's true but, uh, yeah as back- digi mouse is saying the u.s has one of the uh, most crowded prison system in the world apparently uh, oh we are we are considered a prison state like we have <laughs> we're considered a prison state <laughs> we we have the one of the highest incarceration rates in the entire world Oh, God. Like by like by the definition of a prison state, we fit it. Uh, a a chunk of our labor force is supplanted by the United States prison system, and our prison system itself is built in such a way uh, that we get people who go into the prison as a, as a revolving door. We are as a nation, we have one of the highest incarceration rates. Wait, 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 wait. Is it really profitable for us? Like, have yes. So like, so th- we are a like it is. If we, if we didn't have the free labor force, or you know, okay, who's slaves uh, from the prison system, uh, would we suffer greatly economically? Uh, would we suffer greatly? I don't think so because we have other methods, but it is still a carryover. Like it costs, okay. so it costs taxpayers. It's a the number is supposed to be that costs taxpayers per. Uh, person in the prison system it costs us a certain amount it's usually like said 20 to forty thousand mm-hmm. per prisoner but that number is not super accurate because prison systems tend to do a lot of cost cutting uh-huh. um for, for instance in florida actually there is a politician who is trying to work to become governor of florida and Ooh. part of their platform is that they are going to make it a federal not, not federal obviously but a uh, they're going to push for air conditioning to be required in uh, Florida prisons because most Florida prisons don't have AC at all. Holy shit. How are they in like f- not dying in there? That's Oh my god. Wait, were they dying in there? So, there is a uh, there is a there is a rate of heat stroke that is higher than <gasps> it should be, I will say. Heat? Um, oh my god. They said, "Wait, why do you need air conditioning? Because you're in Florida." <laughs> I Florida is the hottest state in the U.S. I think the idea is that uh, <laughs> maybe in whatever situation that they're in, they're packed in such a way that uh, they won't be able to l- live uh, comfortably without being sick or going to a doctor uh, without AC or some other method of controlling the temperature. Which then ultimately increases the burden on taxpayers because now when you have a prison population that gets more sick more often, Mm. they require medicine more often and that medicine has to be funded by us. Um, Okay, that makes sense. But the... So uh, interesting. So like there are some kind of like different alleviation cards here. Okay, okay. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. I think and we're like, going like way off topic, but I th- this we're, is so we're interesting. We're going off tangent, so I'm going to I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to pull this so back. This is so interesting. The... Okay, but yeah, yeah. Let, let us let's pull back. Let's pull back. Okay. So, the original reason why we we're talking about this is because of uh we want to understand a little bit more about the Roe v. Wade decision and uh sorry, the overturning of Roe v. Wade and um also the subsequent response from our uh executive branch biden president uh into doing the executive uh into doing an executive order uh, yes after it has been overturned so yeah that, that is the main topic so, for us today okay go ahead so biden's executive order is uh it's a wonderful gesture i think that it's a, a great thing that he has put it down uh however it's not really going to help all that much. What Biden's executive okay, that's, order... That's exactly what I was wondering about. Because okay. so, when I was reading the content of the executive order, I was like, what is the actionable parts of anything? I don't understand how any of this turns into stuff. It just sounds like words. Okay, anyway, so sorry, go ahead. <laughs> what Biden's executive order does, the things that it that it does is it prevents a state from limiting your ability to travel. That's like the biggest thing because there have been some states that are trying to limit people's ability to travel to get uh, needed contraception. Um, So like, for instance, the issue that happened in Ohio recently, uh, the 10 year old girl who was abused in Ohio and then had to go to uh, Indiana in order to get an abortion. Um, Mm -hmm. And there's a whole rabbit hole where that's concerned, where like uh, conservatives are trying to uh, demonize the doctor now who gave the 10 year old the abortion um, of all things, because I 
I want to understand people with that mindset, but that's not the conversation right now. Um, so mm -hmm. what what the executive order, the biggest thing it's doing is making it to where a state cannot say within its legislation that they can limit your ability to travel to get an abortion. You can't go uh, a state can't say uh, it's illegal to do an abortion here, but it's not illegal to do an abortion in, say, California. Right. You're not allowed to go to California to get that abortion. They can't do that. And Biden's, uh, because some states have tried and Biden's executive order, the that's the main thing it's able to help. What it can't do, it cannot stop a state from uh, inhibiting abortion at all. Currently, we have 14 states now uh, that have that have banned or restricted it in some way. Um, and the executive Wait, order can't do anything about that. I actually have a map for this. There we go. Look at that little map. Yeah, right there. <laughs> That's where abortion is having some uh, a resurgence of uh, resistance. Pro pro problemos. <laughs> problemos um so currently we're here's the reason that biden's executive order ultimately isn't going to matter a whole lot i want you to look at arkansas on that map so let's say somebody is in the south east of arkansas and they need an abortion where do they go where do they where do they go? They're locked. They have to go northwest, roughly about 300 miles. And that's assuming that they can even find a uh, they can even find a Planned Parenthood anywhere near the southern border of the Sorry, nearest. I'm just going to blow this up so you guys to. can see what Sudus is talking about. So do you see the arc? On the map right there, it's surrounded on all sides with other red states, right? It's got, uh, and it's it's got red Mississippi, because, Oklahoma, yeah, exactly. and everywhere else. It's all surrounded by these different states. It's not actually touching any states that uh, have abortion that's, a, that's legal. Uh, and because of this, it would be very difficult for someone in Arkansas to travel to another state to be able to get an abortion. Yep. Um, not to mention, like, let's say somebody's in southern Texas. Where, do, where, where the hell do they go? That They've got about 500 miles uh, northwest so to manage anything. <laughs> and I'm, I'm surprised that that doesn't show Georgia because Georgia actually had a heartbeat bill that went uh, that was that was. Oh, sorry. In. This is old, by the way. So this okay. is from when I did a video. How, how long ago was it now? I want to say it was two weeks ago. Things are changing really, really fast right now. A lot of state laws are going yeah, because into effect. Si because the 14th yeah. state came in six uh six days ago oh yeah exactly so like yeah there, <laughs> there's been definitely some changes since then this was the first i think this is the update i think within five days or so of when roe v way was overturned so that's where yeah. this map is and this because this map i believe was based entirely off of the trigger laws yes um yes, so was. maybe we need to get into what it, what a trigger law is so let's uh let's say that you as a politician uh you've got a, a really it doesn't matter which way the political pendulum swings in your state. Let's just say you've got a majority one way or the other, right? And you put a law through on the books. Uh, you say uh, ice cream cannot be consumed on Tuesday. That's the law you put on the book. <laughs> no ice cream on Tuesdays. Uh -huh. um, and regardless of your reasons for this, if the uh, somebody will then have ice cream on Tuesday, they're going to go to the uh, the police department. They're going to get charged all that they're gonna fight that case in court the they're gonna have to go through Set two appellate clean. courts and they're gonna go oh, to the supreme is. court eventually the mm -hmm. supreme court's gonna look at that case and go what the fuck are you talking about ice you can't have ice cream on tuesday who rules that and they're gonna go this law is unconstitutional <laughs> and it's gonna take you about you know maybe a year or two maybe even more to get to that point but a court on the appellate road is going to say this law is unconstitutional you can't do that so now you've got a law that is sitting on the books that you can't Look enforce anymore because a higher court has said this law can't be enforced. You can't take your ice cream madness <laughs> ice cream into the public madness. eye. Uh, <laughs> you can't ban this. However, let's say that five years down the road, the Supreme Court releases a drafted decision saying we're actually reconsidering the ice cream laws in uh, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And you, this law has now entered the realm of what's called a trigger law. This is a law that cannot be enforced as it was written. But if a higher court says, actually, no, we've reconsidered, that law immediately turns on and becomes enforceable either within one day or 30 days of that Supreme Court decision going on the books. 
Mm-hmm. Um, functionally, this ice, this awkward ice cream scenario uh, is what 13 <laughs> states have done with abortion. They've tried to restrict abortion via a heartbeat law or something like that. And somebody has taken that uh, position of their state and ran it through the courts. And the courts have said, you can't do this because of Roe v. Wade. So that law sits there uh, just unable to be enforced, unable to have anything done about it. Uh But then the Supreme Court comes in and says, hey, actually, we've reconsidered whether or not women are people. They do. They put their uh, their argument forward. Roe gets overturned. Suddenly, these 13 states that had unenforceable laws, Mm -hmm. they can be enforced now. They are now things that legally can uh, can be utilized. From what I understand, the actual argument um, against Roe v. Wade from the conservative side are more about federal government shouldn't have control over certain things. And they wanted to return that power. To, to the, the states. states is that right yes but i can so that's the argument presented but that's not really i i can't i can't read like amy coney barrett's or brett kavanaugh's or or you know justice alito's minds i can't read their minds <laughs> but i would no, but... <laughs> say that that is that is not the intent because So let me just like we did with the ice cream thing. Let's run this back to another conversation that was had in the United States. Um, Let's talk about the Civil War for just a moment. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. So what was one of the primary arguments uh, that the South had when it came to their rights to secede and their rights to keep slavery uh, when they thought the Union was going to try to take away slavery? Was it also about like States rights then? It's like, hey, we states rights. Do a... That Isn't states that rights was their do? exact states rights was their exact argument. I see. They said that uh, they said that it is our it is uh, we do not like big government, so it is the states' rights as to whether or not we should have slavery. Now, the technically that argument has a little bit of merit. Uh, the more the more government, the more rules you have. Uh, the harder it can be to just function in a society, Hmm. the more rules you have to abide by. And like on a surface level, sure, that makes some sense. But then when you consider like, well, hold on, do you think that whether or not a person should be a a slave should be based down to the chance of where they're born? Like, is that because that's where that argument ends up leading. If somebody happens to be born in a state that has slavery, they could happen to be born a slave. And I mean, now they're fucked. Um, mm. but we had this exact argument about states' rights when it came to slavery once before in the United States. So what the Supreme Court has done now is they have brought back the states' rights argument that was had about slavery, but now it's about women's bodies, functionally. Mm. Uh, and there's other stuff that has... Uh, but the function there's... of it, I can't imagine... I don't know. I, I mean... I personally know a few people that are on the conservative side. Most of the people that I'm friends with are liberal, but I know some people that are, you know. And um, I don't think there's anybody that's maliciously going, that's great. I love taking rights away from women. You know what I mean? Uh, I know. I, I understand, like, functionally, that might be uh, I what might be disagree. happening. But, like, are there people celebrating, like, yes, women shouldn't decide like in all the people i talk to i haven't really seen that as much so there are so your your average everyday uh conservative because i have friends who are conservatives too i live in i live in georgia like Mm, there's it comes it comes with the the territory territory. (laughs) um and most of them like we don't see eye to eye on abortion but they don't want a full restriction of abortion however you do have to remember that there's a difference between your average day-to-day voter and say a pundit, somebody who has a financial incentive uh, to, to hold certain opinions. So, um, oh, I see. so you're saying there's like a financial motivation behind like big company, like big systemic decisions towards like profit or something else that could be. There's a, this. there's a bit to that and I'll, I'll get to that. That's a, that's a separate part of the conversation. I'll get to that here in a moment. Um, but for now, I want to, there is a person who I have done content on, on my channel. Uh, are you okay with me name dropping them or would you rather I not? That is entirely up to you. You are entirely okay with name dropping. Go for it. 
All right. This person's name is Nicholas J. Fuentes. Okay. He is, uh, in no uncertain terms, uh, somebody who I would very quickly coin a Nazi. I, oh I don't God. have I don't have <laughs> like actually like, like I thought that was just like, a meme <laughs> like so this person who and I can I can send some videos I've done on him uh, to you after this if you want uh, but so this is a person who has been publicly anti-Semitic on his channel um, he's very anti women's rights and he's he's made no bones about it he's literally said uh women should not have a right to vote they shouldn't have a right to their bodies they should do exactly what men say at all times uh, he's made these arguments on his channel repeatedly it's why he's banned from youtube it's why he's banned from twitch um he has to stream on like i think he's moved to d live now or something i don't remember uh but he's been kicked off several platforms because he he is a person and several people in his audience are people who when you think of that like crazy uh there's no way anybody really believes this person so you're they like are the that caricature person. this is the extreme side you know at least like the big famous person that is like this there's at least this one person that you know there's a there is at the very least him and there are there are more than that but he's he'll be the example here. He has gone on record several times saying that, like, he he strictly wants to restrict uh, women's rights because he doesn't believe they are people. He's what? said several times he believes they are a form of subhuman that needs to just be subservient. And but that is an extreme, though, right? It that must is, be right. I feel like there's definitely a lot of crazy people and like the craziest people are the people that are loudest. Wouldn't you so, say? I would say yes. On on the whole, most people tend to be some flavor of moderate. Right. You don't get like the the term extremist exists for a reason. They are extreme, and there is a minority of them. The problem is, he's a pundit. His job is to like he's a he's a streamer, and he's got a massive audience that dwarfs both yours and mine combined. I see. Um, like. So on the one hand, yes, this is an extreme and he's uh, smaller than, say, uh, you know, somebody who goes on Fox News frequently. Right. But I would not say that him or his audience are small. I would not use that term to describe them. I see. Smaller than smaller than the amount of moderates you find. Absolutely. Mm. Um, but, yeah, no, you're you're right that your regular day to day person uh, is not sitting here going women's rights bad. Ah, right. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but it could be that I the loudest voices, the people. most influential voices are that. Yeah, there are there are some who there are some who believe that and there there are enough of them for them to be of note. But they are still smaller. And that's a, that's the that's the silver lining. The silver lining is there are fewer of them, which okay. is good. Mm. Um, but. That we actually is... have a conservative in the chat right now. I'm not sure if you know one of our mods, uh, DJ mm -hmm. Mouse. Uh, I would say in general, his political beliefs skew towards uh, conservative, and he's also talked about like what he believes in and different people that he talks to. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is usually the typical of what I have seen from like the day to day person that you talk to that is a conservative. So oh, yeah. I think it is important to recognize. I think you're making a good point, which is that the people who have like the big audiences that have like the big um, reactions and everything like that. So, for example, if you look at Fox News and fucking what's his face? Tucker that... Carlson. <laughs> yes. Thank you. His, his, <laughs> his, 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 his section is considered like entertainment or something like that. Sort of Le like or something like that. Fox legally News entertainment, entertainment because it's not it's not supposed to be like just like news right he's purposely inflammatory uh to get people like riled up and that's part of the entertainment value uh yeah, but the, because of that there's still a lot of people that watch right because it's yeah. so fun to watch something like that and the the problem you run into is if you ask if you there there's a another side an awkward side to that coin if you ask the average person uh is mm. fox news a news channel mm -hmm. they will say they will say yes they will say, yes, it is a news channel. Uh, and then sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes they'll also say, it's my primary source for news. I I have a friend uh, who does not watch Fox News, but does uh, go to uh, One American News Network uh, that is worse than Fox News. Um, and that is my partner. Actually, that is. What, oh, sorry. Streaming. Yep. Oh, does is your partner OK? <laughs> you need to take oh, a she's, break? She's fine. She's uh, she's streaming with a friend and. Uh, 
just had a loud reaction to a thing on her game. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, as, as long as it's not like, oh my god. <laughs> okay. No emergency but, there. Um, yeah, Digimon's actually made a point that I have actually seen as well from talking to conservative friends, which is a lot of conservative people consider Fox News as very liberal. Um, and <laughs> compared to what it used I, to be. Compare maybe compared to what it used to be, but considering they still have they still have Tucker, uh, and in terms of the the breadth of the stories that they cover, there are some that are getting to be a little more liberal, which is good to see. It's it's good to see them moving further away from extremism. But I st- but it considering, also means that conservatives don't they just use Fox doxed, News as a main news source just, as any, anymore. Is what I have seen. They still they're moving do. more towards is, like smaller alternative news sources. Which tend to be worse, Which are more like One extreme American News and like One American News Network is a is a big one for that. Um, pro- another problem you get where where Fox News is concerned is it is it is the most consumed news network in the nation, mm. with Tucker Carlson being the most watched pundit mm-hmm. in the nation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I I will say they still have they still put their stories out like the where they doxed uh, the doctor who. Mm-hmm. Uh, was in Indiana who helped the 10 year old get an abortion. Mm -hmm, Like mm -hmm. they went through and, and put her name up publicly, put her visage up, did all of that. And then like the attorney general of uh, Indiana was on there saying like, no, we're going to go after her. We're going to do this. Um, Mm -hmm. Which can lead to another issue. If you've, if you've ever heard the term stochastic terrorism. Stochastic um, terrorism. (laughs) Doesn't stochastic mean like random or something? It means random. So uh, let's say I'm in a in a group of a hundred people. Yeah. Uh, and there's a there's a person annoying me, um, and mm. I go, hey, uh, I. This person is annoying me. Won't somebody rid me of them? Like oh, it would be nice if somebody like rid me of them. And like, then is that what canceling is? I do that on Twitter. <laughs> No, 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 no. This is um, this is the would somebody go uh, banned? (laughs) No, this one's the uh, would someone rid me of this meddlesome priest thing? Where like you say a statement like someone should do something about this. Oh, Um, I see. Okay, and then hundreds of thousands of people will hear that statement and go, maybe more people will hear it and go, yeah, something should be done about it. But randomly, and this is where the term stochastic comes in. There will be one or two people who go, you're right, someone should do something about this, and that someone is me. Hmm. And that's what you depend on, is that small percentage. Sometimes. And this, this creates an environment where the person who said, uh, who said the thing, the won't somebody rid me of this thing, mm-hmm. um, they have plausible deniability. Like in a court of law, the court can't, you, you can't go to that person and say, you incited violence. Because legally, as far as the United States is concerned, they didn't. They didn't incite violence. They just said, you know, wouldn't it be convenient if this person <laughs> was taken care of? And then somebody did it. I see. That creates a... Wait, wait, wait. Like the January <laughs> thingy. With Trump? <laughs> Is that what you mean? Trump, like, like where, where it's where just like Trump, a sort of like, like a vague suggestion? Like, don't... I'm not saying <laughs> storm into the building. <laughs> but we should definitely march in that general direction. Yeah, it's the same... <laughs> It's the same kind of deal. It's it's the same kind of stuff there, um, and that's that's where you start to run into into issues. Is we we don't have a way to hold people accountable for for that kind of stuff, and there's it's really hard to mechanically do that because like if I say like any one of us could say uh, that a person who's a public figure is a problem, and then any one of our fans could go out and do like do something stupid. Mm-hmm. that they should not do. Uh, and then someone can make the argument, well, technically this content creator was accountable. It's their fault. They uh, convinced a member of their audience to go do something harmful. It's like, well, no, they didn't. We just, we publicly aired a grievance about a person. And so mm-hmm. sometimes you don't even intend it to happen. Right. But it nonetheless can. Like you, and, and yeah, Digimouse is right there. You like, it's, you can't regulate stupid. It's, <laughs> it's you can't regulate yeah. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> there's a uh, there's a there's a line where you can hold people accountable, and there's a point where you 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 stop having that ability to realistically. Um, so, like, there's an argument to be had that Fox News putting uh, that doctor's uh, 
Visage up there on the screen, giving her name, saying that she's a criminal, uh, doing all these things. There's an argument to be had that that can cause a, stata a stochastic issue where people will go and harass or harm that doctor in real life mm -hmm. because they're doing that. But then you get the other side of the argument that, well, they're the news. They're technically doing their job reporting the news. And you get you get this this long back and forth about whether like should they should they not. Uh, in this conference, my my position is they're fucking stupid and they shouldn't. Uh, my position, <laughs> my position very quickly is doctor provides abortion for 10 year old. Are you saying 10 year old should carry to term? I've seen people make the argument that, yes, the 10 year old should have been forced to carry to term. Right. I've I've seen that. I've got a I have a video planned on my channel uh, about a person who has made that argument publicly. Yes. Um. So, like, my position is this, but if I step aside from my position and talk about it just as a whole, there is a long back and forth that can be had there. Mm -hmm. And that's where you tend to run into issues. But the, uh, but we've also, once again, pulled very far away from the oh uh, God, original stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Sorry, executive order. We were, um, we were talking about the yeah, executive the order. So that was one of the things was access to uh, getting care in other states. And that's how this idea of like the, the 10 year old the, that want to get uh, they want to get the abortion for the 10 year old. And they weren't able to without uh, making sure. Without certain traveling things to are Indiana. In place. Yes. Yeah. And then so the, the problem with an executive order, the, the issue with it is. For one, obviously, it can't like restrict a state so much, which is not really a problem. That's kind of a feature. You don't want the president to be able to just sign mm -hmm. one thing into law and suddenly everybody's screwed. Like that's, we have a balance of power for a reason. We don't mm -hmm. want that. Um, but let's say uh, that the next president comes along and says, well, I don't like that executive order. They can just, they can just exit out. Like from what I understand, that is what executive orders are supposed to be. They're supposed to be quick, like, um, Quick things stop that caps. you can yeah yeah quick stop cast while things are starting to catch up so that other yeah. things have a little bit more time to like get enacted so it's not supposed to be a permanent law the idea is it's supposed to be like a nudge in a certain direction so that you know as things play out over the next year two years um this is like kind of like a thing to kind of nudge it in one direction yeah that's why it's like i'm i'm happy that he signed the executive order that he did i think that it's helpful exactly but it's not it. but it doesn't Stop a whole lot and it's 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 good as a gesture and it's good that it's happening and it's good for for public relations reasons um like you you sure. want to be known as the president that protected or tried to protect women's rights yeah obviously cool uh but again like this is not a it's not a permanent solution um so then you get you run into the issue of needing to still vote to do things like codify row mm -hmm. and now we've run into another wall two walls actually um one uh, one issue we're running into is that for instance by and large uh the republican side of things does not want to codify roe v way roe v wade and Can the democratic side just does. a little bit more for the people in the chat um so like what does it mean to codify so if you were to codify uh, Roe v. Wade, as opposed to it being right. this is a law as a uh, so this is a law circumstantially because the Supreme Court decided that it, uh, a thing is interpreted this way, you actually mm. functionally make a law that says women have a right to abortion up to a certain number of weeks. Mm. Um, we didn't have a law that said that in so many words that was federal. We had a Supreme Court decision that everything else had to be interpreted through without that Supreme right, Court decision. Exactly. I think this is actually a very, very important point. So like we people talk about like, oh, no, they overturned Roe v. Wade, the big law that guaranteed abortion. There was no law. It was, it was not a law. It was never a law. It is it just a way that you're case. interpreting the case. And one of the things that um, they were thinking about doing is that instead, like right now, it's just interpreted a different way. Still, there are no laws. You have state laws. That talked a lot about different types of abortion, but there's no federal law that said you need to allow abortion or something like that. It was just an interpretation Correct. of a current thing that is already there. So what they mean by codify is actually putting it, making it explicit into an actual federal law where you actually write it out and say, like, explicitly abortion is not allowed or something like that. Uh, or abortion yeah. has to be allowed, etc. Because okay, anyway, what, sorry, what the 
because what the Supreme Court's going to do is they're going to be like, is this constitutional? But when you put the law in, uh, it, it relies less on is this specifically constitutional and more on did the uh, was the will of the people heard? Mm -hmm. Did the people uh, we're a like we're not a, we're not a democracy. We're a republic. We have representative democracy. <laughs> Did, yep, that's true. Mm -hmm. Was the will of the people exercised through the mechanics of the Senate and the House? Uh, and that's that's how a law is made. The Senate and the House, there's restrictions on which one of them can uh, write certain laws, like budgetary stuff goes through the House, mm -hmm. for instance. Um, but yeah, getting getting the actual laws written, getting them codified, that's the House, that's the Senate. Those are the people who are, uh, at least the House, we're voting on in uh, <laughs> Thank November. Thank you for the alert. We are at 5 hours and 30 minutes and 8 seconds. If you'd like to raise the timer, you can contribute subs, bits, uh, or $10 minimum donor uh, to raise the timer. Our goal is to get to Sunday night, uh, midnight, if we can. Right now, we are through until, let's see, around 10.30? I think we have uh, right now until around 10.30 p.m. tonight, EDT. All right, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so, the problems we're running into, there's, there's two issues. Uh, one is that, let's say you understand already uh, that Democrats and Republicans both suck. Like we, we we have that we have that understanding going in right now. We, we all know that both sides suck. Putting okay, yes, um, I agree. But we, but we understand that there are that there are certain things that one side uh, or the other has in like their list of like these are the values you, you tend to have kind of sort of when you're on one side of things. When it comes to abortion rights, those tend to be more democratic now mm -hmm. thanks to the southern strategy which I can get into later if I need to. Um, <laughs> but those uh those tend to be more on the democratic side of things. And yes, mm -hmm. I agree to Jamal's the two the two party system sucks, but we <laughs> functionally functionally we have no way of changing it as of right now. Um, because we have a first past the post system. First past the post system mathematically always breaks down into a two party system. Uh, CGB Gray actually did a wonderful video on this, um, which sucks because it's like yeah. I want to be it's like so oh. ingrained that it's gonna it, it's like impossible to get away from. Like I want to be I want to be the person that goes like, hey, yeah, vote for the person who shares uh, the majority of your values. That I'm like. Wait, God, but that's but not can. gonna work. It doesn't work. I hate that. Um, uh. but. Yeah. So, like, when it comes to abortion, most of the time, that's a, a Democratic thing. Usually, most Democrat politicians, mm -hmm. the, the voters vary wildly, but the politicians tend to vote uh, in favor of abortion measures on the Democratic side. So, yeah. here's where we hit our problem. In the Senate right now, we have the, the slimmest of, like, bare majorities, like, just, just, just ever so barely. Uh, and it's it's really only only a technicality because I need to introduce you to a, a lovely man named Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin. Manchin, Manchin uh, is a Democrat who is filed under Democrat, uh, is legally part of that party uh, and tends to almost always vote Republican. Hmm. Awkwardly. So with us having like uh, a very, very slim margin of Democratic senators, uh, most laws that try to go through the Senate right now, uh, they have two uh, stone walls. The first one is we don't technically have that majority because Manchin's there. Like, it's very, very hard uh, because his voting technically does not slide with the party usually, which wouldn't matter much if he was not also the deciding vote half the time. <laughs> um, I see. And the other the other problem we have is the Senate has this lovely little uh, tradition called the filibuster. Oh, yeah. Um, I only know that because of Parks and Rec, where, where I saw this <laughs> lady. She was wearing roller skates because she was going to go somewhere. But then she had to filibuster. So she just sat there standing and like trying to keep talking about nothing. And she was really tired and she really needed to pee. <laughs> Jesus. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah, there is there is there is cinema uh as well, Digimouse. You are you are correct there. 
Um, I'm just trying to, I don't want to throw like a shit ton of names out because then it makes mm. things, it complicates things needlessly. I would say the but vast majority right. of the people in the chat probably don't know a lot about a lot of things. We're going to have a few people that know a lot and most of the people are not going to know, gonna know too much so uh actually i did want to keep i do want to keep this like just like very, very general thank you so much for the timer um uh, to uh just get a general overview of the issue most of this is i want people to understand what is actually happening that is the main thing that i want i think that's very very important <laughs> a lot of things happen when uh in the u.s especially with like laws and other things like that they get misre interpreted by the news and other things like that very quickly <laughs> and while this is still fresh i want to get like a different take on this so that people actually are more aware about the ramifications of the different things that are happening because i think what people think of an executive order and like overturning a Roe v. Wade, it probably isn't what they think it is which is why i want to talk to you what i consider an expert i know like this person is not you know <laughs> it's not the same as like i don't know talking to an academic or something like that but i do think that students is very very knowledgeable has read up on a lot of things and this is the main part of his content he does a lot of this kind of stuff like as a job basically so i i am so thankful that he's here to explain like kind of these concepts to us oh sorry <laughs> give me one second i forgot okay so like my discord like shuts off every once in a while it's like being really upset with me. <laughs> I actually do think it's not just that people have no critical thinking or something like that. I think that news and everything there we is go. being. Thank you so much for. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, mm -hmm. the, the news and everything is becoming. How do you say? It, it's a different type of digestion than it used to be. And um, a lot of people are picking up of random tidbits of things that they hear, whatever random most interesting parts that they think is most inflammatory, and then using that to build communities around something that might not have even been a thing. Yes, exactly, polarizing. Uh, and that's actually one of the big things that I want to do on my platform as VB Chan. I know I don't talk about this a lot. I'm usually just, I don't know, making ball jokes. <laughs> but um it is important to me that you guys get like at least a little bit of that so you guys get to talk to each other about things that aren't just the little tidbits of information that you heard from the news so yeah anyway go ahead go ahead go see this. i am i am trying to remember what i was saying before um <laughs> sorry we have like oh, right, the filibuster. Why yeah, the filibuster is there, is there filibuster. some people who might not know what a filibuster is um yeah. so um, so in the United States, every six years, you elect your senators and every two years you elect people into your house of representatives. Mm -hmm. Did you know that it used to not be that way? What was it like before, students? The, the executive branch uh, and the uh, bits of the legislative branch, they handpicked senators and brought them in. And then the mm -hmm. House, though, we always voted for the House. That was a thing that we always did uh, in America for the most part uh, since that institution was put in. But the Senate... Right. used to be mostly populated by uh, functionally it was the aristocracy. It, the reason we called mm -hmm. it the house, it was supposed to be the, the lower house and the upper mm -hmm. house. The lower house was our house of representatives, the people we elect every two years. And the upper house was the Senate, the people, the aristocracy uh, put in power so that you could have the arguments from the people that, you know, do all the work and the arguments from the people who were parasites. Um, a bit of an oversimplification, but functionally, that's that's what it was. Senate was appointed by the legislature. Sorry, there's one thing I want to address. Uh, King Plotin in the chat says, polarization isn't horrible. It's a conversation you can't even start today. It devolves into name calling if someone simply disagrees. I actually don't think that's the only problem. I do think polariz polarization itself is also an issue. And the reason I think that is because I think it kind of gives you an idea of the health of a nation by how extreme the extremes are and how much they agree with one another. And when you see like polarization, you see these extremes pop up, obviously there's going to be discontent because no matter which way things go, someone's going to be upset. Uh, you can see the values of the different people in the nation are very, very different. Okay, sorry, I didn't go. It's also another issue you have with uh, what's called the Overton window. The, uh, the grouping of beliefs that are considered normal within your country 
um, a lot of American culture is more right wing than a lot of, say, European culture on not every issue, mind you. Uh, there are some social issues that we are more left wing on than, say, uh, places like Japan are. Um, but a lot of our stuff is shifted farther to the right in in the global Overton window. Yes. Uh, doesn't mean a whole lot if you just care about United States politics, <laughs> but it it does matter if you've like if you've got a friend in Germany, for instance, who's like that thing sounds really uh, weird. That thing you said, and you're like, oh well, it's weird because it's not the norm for your country's politics, but it is within the. Uh, I know Japan isn't uh, isn't in Europe, but my example of a a country that is harder uh on certain like social issues than we are would be japan uh they're the one that comes to mind immediately um mm -hmm. there are certain things that finland for instance uh certain things that we would not do as a nation right now legally uh that finland does do uh like say if you legally get a gender change in finland you must get sterilized which is not a thing here oh, um, that's so terrifying like that's like the on the one hand they're like yeah it's easier to get that stuff done on the other hand they're like what but also... we're gonna but we're gonna do this thing that is technically considered a, a step in genocide um oh, also did you mouse definitely get your definitely get your blood sugar taken care of that is that is no joke uh my partner definitely is diabetic go get some food yeah do not do not mess with that stuff go take care of yourself um go get something to eat so we love you the reason uh, to bring it back to the, the Senate, the reason that mm -hmm. the filibuster even exists there in the first place is. The Senate was the aristocracy. These were the people that had all the time in the world because they didn't really work, all things considered. Um, so they had the tradition of infinite debate. You can debate as long as you want about mm. anything you want and you can debate uh, your own position like the amount of time it takes for you to state your case can be as long as you choose that is based entirely on the senate originally being the united states didn't have royalty but functionally the equivalent of what we would have as nobles right. were the people running mm. the senate whereas the house of representatives it was assumed oh was you're like in the, the house class. <laughs> yeah you need to be the common uh, people you need to spend a certain amount of time debating because we need to get shit done. We need to do stuff uh, faster. We need to be, uh, we, we're, you know, we're the people on the ground this affects. So right. we need to do shit now. So there is a limited amount of debate allowed in the house. Um, so whenever somebody says a politician is filibustering that they're, they're talking about a Senator, a Senator <laughs> is the like senators have the filibuster yeah. reps do not. Um, but, uh, that all said, those are the two issues you have there. You have people who, when you're, when you're relying on people to vote on party lines, mm -hmm. which we shouldn't, it, we shouldn't be in a position where party lines matter, but when you're relying on people to vote on party lines for a human rights issue, and on top of that, uh, somebody can just say, well, you guys might have the votes, but I'm going to talk about Sonic the Hedgehog for 30 hours until we go to recess. Um, <laughs> which is a thing you can do. Right. Um, Ted Hello, Cruz, famous, uh, Ted Cruz famously read green eggs and ham on the Senate floor as his nice. filibuster. Lovely. Um, I think that says something about his reading level, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, Excuse me. That's, um, I hope you guys understand. So that was a joke. These are jokes. It was a joke. Okay, guys. That was entirely a joke. <laughs> These are jokes. Okay. The, uh, the the opinions of the opinions I may or may not have do not reflect on the opinions of uh, that Vivi may or may not have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I so, just want to say, like, I, I have said this before. It's just, um, you know, what it, whatever things that you guys hear on here, the goal is not to, um, how do you say, fight. <laughs> <laughs> These jokes are not meant to uh, get you guys riled up so that we punch each other. Uh, I hope that these jokes are, um, you know, making it so that things are a little bit calmer and that you guys understand it. It's just, you know, we're trying to have a relaxed talk, talk and inform. Uh, I believe someone in previously, uh, I think it was 
Corvalon. Corvalon was asking if there's going to be another person that comes on, like, for example, a conservative and a liberal, uh, to talk about things, to get, like, their different views of what's going on. Um, that is something that um, I would welcome maybe in the Twitch chat. Uh, at this moment, we do not have anybody that's a streamer that's lined up for for this. But later on, after we get to a certain point, I'd be happy to talk about different points that people bring up in the Twitch chat. Okay, go ahead. There's also the other the other side of this uh, is that when it comes to like, hey, let's have a balanced perspective on the panel, you then have to also have a moderator. You then also have to have the spoons uh, to be part of that back and forth, which not it, not everybody has. Um, what he's referencing right now, uh, the spoons idea, is that um, all this thing is not free in terms of energy and effort on our part, uh, so that not everybody has the stig. Uh, how do you say it? the stamina, and not everybody has like um, the uh, yeah, basically stamina, the the physical and mental stamina to stay talking about this thing for a very very long time, uh, especially when you're arguing or for or against something things can get very heated so uh keep that in mind sudis usually does this as like a solo thing <laughs> a solo act it's more like a one person to a lot of people kind of thing he might debate things with um videos that he finds but it's not the same as a live debate okay and i've i've done live debate before uh the problem per, me personally the problem i run into with live debate is my memory is awful um i rely when we start getting the technicalities i rely <sighs> very heavily on notes uh when it comes to things that i like even like right before this discussion i literally was just doing a bunch of crash course research that i had already done before but i know that if i don't instant like very very quickly refresh it in my head it's not going to be there it's going to go somewhere out into the aether and i'm i'm just going to lose it um not lose it as in go crazy, but like lose the thing I needed to talk about, um, <laughs> which is like, I hate that because I like doing live debate. I did it for the first three years of my channel. Uh, yeah. Every every month or two, I would have somebody on for a live debate or I would go on to uh, one of the debate shows at the time. It was mo at the time it was a uh, non sequitur show. Uh, after that, it turned into modern day debate, modern day debate. Um, and then even uh, the Atheist Ed's channel would host like multi-round discussion stuff that I would be part of. Emotional I just, damage! Just as my ability to remember oh. things and call things uh, easier mm -hmm. starts to wane, my ability to function in a live environment with other people also starts to wane. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where we run into issues. I used to debate with Flat Earthers. That was a... That was a time. <laughs> All right. I think uh, <laughs> we have about 45 more minutes of your time. And of course, I'd be happy with more. I don't know how much time you have left. But uh, the original time that I've slated to steal you away from doing your other stuff is two hours. Uh, with the 45 minutes left, I was wondering if you can go over what is actually written in Biden's executive order. And uh, after that, we can talk about what physical things are actually being done. So I need to pull up the text of the order of real course, quick. Of course, go ahead. Uh, so let me go ahead mm. and pull that up here. Oh, that is a lot of text. <laughs> uh, but you can skip so to main points. There's, there's, there's three, there's, I think, big, big ideas. There's four, there. there's four big ones. Oh, four. Sorry, um, four. So safeguarding access to reproductive health services, including uh, abortion and contraception, because there are there's like one or two states that are actually trying to get contraception uh and yes. wrapped up into this as well mm -hmm. um which i i will not give my full opinions on because my full opinions on them are not safe for twitter or uh, for twitch um <laughs> okay that's fine uh -huh. um One, but two, uh, also protecting the privacy of patients three. and their access to accurate information uh mm -hmm. which as we've already seen uh is has already been a problem with the 10 year old girl that was in ohio um the more people around that case get their information leaked to the public, because like now we have the person who who did the act is charged. We have the name of the doctor. Like right. eventually there's enough a lot of the of puzzle public names now. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually there's enough puzzle pieces where people in her school are going to go. It was you. You were you. You were the one you were, that got raped. You, and, like, and now suddenly yeah. you've a child's life that was already ruined is now being made substantial 
substantially worse. Um, next thing is promoting safety and security of patients, providers, and clinics. So this one uh, seems to be mainly the fact that there has been acts of violence around abortion clinics. Uh, the mm -hmm. protests that happen almost 24-7 in front of them, um, they sometimes do devolve into violence. The level mm -hmm. of violence is not always a bomb was planted somewhere, but things like that can and have happened. So... So that's the extreme, but there's also that's other the extreme. smaller uh, acts of violence that are still dangerous. Like if you're like physically barring the door, for instance, when right, somebody's right. if to me, physically preventing somebody from getting medical care uh, is a type of violence. There's there's no difference to me between like cutting my arm and then preventing somebody from stitching up an arm that was cut to me, like functionally the same thing is happening. A person is responsible now for for me bleeding like. Um, and then uh, coordinating the implementation of federal efforts to protect reproductive rights and access to healthcare. So all the, the issues that we run into with a lot of this, with all of these big points, mm -hmm. they're all incredibly vague. <clears throat> the, the breadth uh, to which any of these can be enforced is going to be up to the circumstances of whatever situation that they're put in. Uh, on the one hand, that can be seen as a feature, not a bug. Sometimes you write laws in a vague way so that they can encapsulate more actions that need to be mm -hmm. taken care of. Right. Uh, so you don't have to be so specific and have a bajillion. Mm -hmm. But but sometimes it also can backfire where the court can go. Uh, this specific situation doesn't fall within your umbrella because your umbrella doesn't note it. Mm -hmm. um, but so the actual actionable things, the things the uh, Secretary of Health and Human Services uh, has been noted to take on in the next 30 days where his executive order is considered. First one is protecting access to medical abortion. It says here that they will take additional action to protect and expand access to abortion care, including access to medication that the FDA approves as safe and effective uh, over 20 years ago. Uh, this is just a bit in here so that a, a, uh, a pundit can't go, uh, these medications are scary. They're bad. Like, mm. no, these things have been tested a long, long time ago. It's like okay. saying, don't, it's like saying don't have activated charcoal in a, in a hospital, despite the myriad of times we've had to use it. Mm. Um, <clears throat> the actions will apparently build upon steps that the health secretary has already taken. That bit's not super important. Uh, the next major point here that the secretary is supposed to cover is ensuring emergency medical care. So the mm -hmm. health secretary will take steps to ensure that all patients, including pregnant women and those uh, experiencing pregnancy loss, have access to full rights and protections for emergency medical care afforded under the law, including... Uh, including by considering updates to, uh, to current guidance to clarify physician responsibilities and protections under the Emergency Medical Treatment Act. So this is, mm -hmm. um, you have, uh, as an example, um, you have uh, an ectopic pregnancy. Uh, for, right. those who don't, for those who don't know, that's, uh, you have a, a fetus that is growing in you, but it's not growing in the womb. It's, yeah, it's growing... growing in the fallopian, fallopian tube or somewhere else. Yeah. That's what they're it's growing ectopic. It's growing somewhere that it can, it will not be able to survive and it will kill you. Um, there are some states that have considered laws to make even ectopic pregnancy abortions illegal. Uh, but this is literally considered emergency medical care. So Biden's act here is to make it to where things like that, that will be considered like this thing will kill you. Yes. Uh, this is, this is to protect stuff like that. This also protects the physicians. By yes. clarifying physician responsibilities, this makes it to where a doctor who like gets thrown into a court of law, like the doctor who uh, who helped in Indiana, probably will be. They can go. I was doing my responsibilities under the law, and this is why. Uh, this mm -hmm. this helps protect them. The next one is protecting access to contraception. Um, I don't think I really need to go into the details on this. Contraception includes, you know, Plan B, condoms, things like that. Yes. So um, there are certain contraceptions that some people are worried about um, being related to uh, per, uh, interrupting or stopping a pregnancy. IUDs, um, for instance. Uh, there, there's like some talk about different things about what people believe. Uh, Plan B, for example, is one thing that it's possible very, very faintly, but possible that you can flush out a fetus 
uh, but it's like very, very early zygote stage. Um, so that's one of the things that they're thinking, for example. And mm. some people have taken this to the extreme side, which is that maybe all these things in the contraception umbrella uh, could be related. Um, again, uh, with various amounts of evidence <laughs> of, uh, behind what that really means uh, in terms of life and uh, in terms of forming um, a, a human. Anyway, so, yes, go ahead. Like, um, the reason something like this needs to be protected, for instance, uh, the... Mm. Granted, when I say the pill, uh, that everybody knows that means, like, you're on the you're on the contraception pill, but there's, like, five different types of medication uh, depending on which one you use. Uh, so, just understand, like, when I'm saying the pill, I'm meaning just, in general, all of the medications we use uh, in terms of, like, uh, interrupting monthly cycle and flow that mm -hmm. that's functionally act as contraceptive. Um, if a law is put in to stop plan B, for instance, uh, to make it uh, to where you can't have plan B because some states are considering laws that will label that as uh, an abortion pill, despite it not being that. Um, if you hit plan B, you legally then can hit uh, the regular contraception because it's, it's the same. It's the same thing. Um, it's just a more concentrated dose that forces the body to act incredibly quickly. Yeah. Um, so because Plan B is a double dose of the normal birth control pill, which is, I believe, what is it? A big dose of, what is it? Progesterone? Progesterone, I progesterone. believe. Um, uh, basically, it's, it's kind of very similar to if you really needed to in an emergency situation, you don't have it. Take two of your birth control pills, basically. Um, that is possible for you to do. Uh, but yeah, they try not to do that because it's not good for your body. Um, so like that's where the sliding slippery slope comes into play. Uh, also, as for which states are trying to take out contraception, uh, Missouri is one of them. Uh, Missouri is working on trying to block Medicaid funding uh, from going to places like Pan uh, Planned Parenthood. And they're also trying to target contraceptives that are also funded by Planned Parenthood. Um, because Planned Parenthood doesn't just do abortions. They do a they variety do all of other things. Of stuff. I'm not sure if you guys uh, know that, but they're basically just a clinic that just specializes in sexual health. Um, like even like uh, breast cancer checks. Yes, they exactly. Will do. Um, so the other things that the executive order puts in is launch outreach and public education efforts. Uh, so it's hard to say how actionable something like this would be outside of like a state funded propo campaign uh, where you just put out a bunch of advertisements on, you know, uh, social media uh, or anywhere else. Uh, or if this would be something more akin to say like the dare campaign was. Uh, when we had, you know, the the huge anti-drug drug war push. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say how this one's going to materialize, but I will say that just in general, people need to have more sexual education. We do not have very functional sexual education here in the United States. It's it varies very widely depending on state. And if you look at a, a map mm -hmm. uh, of states that have more abortions, uh, mm -hmm. per 100,000 people. The states that have uh, worse publicly funded sexual education tend to also have more abortions because <laughs> it, it's it's weird how that happens. It's, it's very weird how I that wonder, happens. How, how does that happen? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I wonder, I wonder <laughs> if, if being told early uh, that, you know, you have uh, options. There's, a, there's, a, there's a pill Pre you can take or you right. have an IUD. I wonder if those things might help people not get pregnant. Maybe I've actually Education's heard important. that specifically as um, a recent, like a what they call quote unquote, like a feminist view of like being pro pro life is that it emphasizes the importance of contraception <laughs> over uh, using abortion as an afterthought, which I thought was a very interesting take. Anyway, sorry, go on. <laughs> also, the uh, there was a point in there said Planned Parenthood was funded by a racist eugenicist. Um, Hitler got his idea for the Holocaust from the United States. So you're right. Yes, the United States had early brown shirt campaigns uh, and all kinds of things in, that Hitler got his ideas from. However, the statement uh, this thing was funded by a racist doesn't necessarily matter. Our entire country was founded by racists and we've come a long way since then. Like it's a it's a vapid statement that doesn't do anything. But it is true. It is technically true. 
It is true. Sure. It is it is I awkwardly think it's true. It's important that if that's the case, you can always put a different name on something. <laughs> that's kind of what we're doing now. <laughs> but anyway, that's besides the point. Um so yeah, so that was what was that? Was that the third there's, point? There's uh, one there's one last one big last thing it one. does. Um, it conven uh, convening volunteer lawyers. Uh, the attorney yes, general. Yes, that was one I was very curious about. Okay. Yes. Ahead. So it says here the attorney general and the White House counsel will convene private pro bono attorneys, bar associations, and public interest organizations to encourage robust legal representation of patients, providers, and third parties lawfully seeking or offering reproductive health services in the country. Such representation could include protecting the right to travel out of state to seek medical care which we mm -hmm. covered before, uh, mm -hmm. immediately following the Supreme Court decision, the president announced his administration position uh, that Americans must remain free to travel safely to another state to seek the care they need, uh, as the Eternal General made clear in their statement, and his commitment to fighting the attack by a state or local official who attempts to interfere with women exercising this right. So, why does this matter? Because technically somebody could say that this part, aside from the right to travel, doesn't uh -huh. matter because you already have a legal right to a, a lawyer. You have right, right to legal counsel. Mm -hmm. here's the thing Pu uh, current publicly available legal counsel people who are on the uh the public taxpayer paycheck for that mm -hmm. are haggard they are i i they do their best but realistically in a court of law they're not going to be able to help you out that much compared to uh compared to a lawyer who takes things uh, who like accepts their cases as opposed to having a ton of cases that the state says like we need you for um, what this does is it allows there to be a separate pool of lawyers that you have access to to bolster that pool of publicly available lawyers right now that will take your case and they are not haggard. These are people who are not taking case by case by case by case by case and they're on their 15th shot of caffeine desperately trying to read through your legal paperwork and they just forgot your name halfway through. It's trying to get attorneys that are not in that situation to be able to be your representatives. I see. Okay. So I never heard of the president having control over something like this. I have no idea what it means to for a president to say we're gonna gather pro bono lawyers. Like the like can the government like pay them more or something? Like I don't understand like how, how that comes together. Arona, thank you so much. Emotional damage Yes. So let's see here. I thought this was like a very weird point to me. I, I never thought of like the president having control over it because this is such a separate thing. It's not like there's like federal, big federal organization of lawyers that you can kind of like just call upon and be like, hey, let's so, go. This is what we're doing. You know what I mean? So the way this works is uh, attorneys will choose, as far as I know, uh, will choose to be part of this pool or choose not to be in this pool. The reason I say this is... Uh, in November, uh, Biden tried to push for uh, pro bono legal aid once before uh, in terms of uh, it, it was about immigration and immigration attorneys, uh, attorneys, attorneys uh, <laughs> in November. Uh, a lot of them, by and large, refused to be part of the pro bono pool. Uh, and that's that's a thing they legally can do. Um, so this is more like uh, this is functionally a call to action more than anything. Okay. Um, so it's, it's not that it's, anything physical really is there. Yeah. There's not going to be a, a police the, officer yeah, that yeah, shows yeah. up to a lawyer. Exactly. There's not going to be a police officer going up to legal, legal Eagles house going FBI open up. We need you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like okay, that's so not, it's, it's that's, definitely more like a very strong suggestion from the president to encourage more people. Kind of, it's a, it's a plea. It's functionally. Okay. It's a plea. It's a plea. It's like, please, um, please, it's, please take these cases. It's important. It's, it's him asking, like, it's him asking various bar associations, like the bar association, hey, uh, how many of your lawyers currently are not hurting for money and can take on an extra case and are not currently bogged down by the public system? Um, and they can go, well, we have this uh, sheet of 20 references and they go, OK, cool. We've got our call sheet. We're going to go make some calls and see oh, who can I help see. here. That's that's mechanically so what's going okay, on. There. OK, OK, that, that makes sense to me. That's interesting. I never thought that that'd be something that um, president would call for. That's that's interesting. I think actually this is just a side point, but um, how Trump Trump has used the executive order 
has, I think, enlightened a lot of us about what can be done with executive orders. <laughs> yeah, like, for instance, when, uh, when he tried to push through uh, budgetary stuff mm -hmm. uh, for the wall and uh, for the southern border wall, and then he realized, oh, shit, the House of Representatives handles that, not me. <laughs> no, I'm sure it was done before. Executive orders have been done many, many times. What I found really interesting, this is not like a criticism or anything. It was just more like about the different limits and like what you can do with executive orders and how often, etc. Yeah. You can essentially have like unlimited executive orders. It's just kind of yeah. like during your time, write a memo kind of thing and then like tell people to like try to get stuff done. Go. Yeah. Which you're, I thought was really interesting. It's a big call to action, and there's some stuff that's legally enforceable, but a lot of stuff will will fall down onto the the state senators as to whether or not they're going to to operate with it. Like again, like Biden's executive order cannot stop a state from restricting abortion access within its boundaries. Right, it can He's stop actually a state not actually stopping it. Yeah, yeah, it can, it can stop a state from saying you can't go to a state that doesn't have these legalities. But he's not he going to stop that. anybody from being like, oh, you can't make that law that yeah. tells people that you can't have abortion here or it can't be like that. It's not saying that it's um kind of, OK, you can only enforce within your state, though, because that's a state thing. So they're saying, yeah, like, and okay, that's... we can help with at least interstate stuff. Yeah, which is why, like, the biggest the biggest takeaways from here for me are about the information uh, for the doctors and the patients mm -hmm. trying to make sure that those are kept more private, uh, the ability to travel between states and the separate pool of pro bono lawyers. Those are the big takeaways for me from the executive order. Now, again, how much it's going to help. I do not know. We're going to see how most of this materializes because as of right now, this feels to me personally, just like a nice gesture. <laughs> with some good things in it but it's so not much of what democrats are known for <laughs> but it's not it doesn't do a whole lot it doesn't again do like we... anything, <laughs> but people feel better i guess <laughs> like it can, it can it's it's a thing that i think the biggest impact for this is, is it's going to be a thing that will allow people to go when somebody goes uh democrats aren't protecting women's rights uh, a a person can point to this and go, well, actually, uh, this happened, um, and that's so, like so. So King <laughs> Patton, uh, just as a just as you're saying, you're saying like, look at look as if the system was working as it should. That is how the system is should be working. I actually agree. Uh, what the issue here is in terms of like from the view of of the Democratic Party trying to push an agenda versus the Republican Party trying to push an agenda. I think the Democratic Party hasn't pushed as efficiently in a lot of ways, as the Republican Party has. Uh, I think the Republican Party has worked tirelessly over a very long period of time to be able to get Roe v. Wade overturned. And the Democrats are a lot more focused on other kinds of things and appearances rather than actually specific actions that are being done, which I find really interesting. Uh, it, you see a lot of people who are Democrats that are, sorry, let, let's use liberal. People who are liberal, who um, they would not hesitate to go to the streets and pick up a sign and like yell at people. But that's very different than people coming out and actually trying to figure out what kind of systemic changes can you take, like what can you do as a person to change laws, right? Like when you those talk are to not the about... same people that are writing to their, to their um, representatives. These are not the same people who are voting in every single local election. You know, it's just very, very different. Yep. You don't even have to write. Don't you? Here, here's my suggestion: Don't write to your local representatives. Go talk to them physically. Yes. Mm -hmm. You you can like I have I have public uh, I have personally gone to the uh, the office of uh, Marcus Flowers, who is uh, who's the person in the running for my district, trying mm -hmm. to run against Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, like I've personally gone and met him and asked him his position on uh, on various things. One of my conversations with him was about his position on uh, on unionizing and some of the acts that uh, the House can work where that's concerned. Like, you, these are things you can do. Their office location is publicly available info. Mm -hmm. If you have a problem, you can literally go and talk to either uh, the head of their team. I have the I have the personal phone number for his team head in my Hello, phone Yale is and cool. have sent them one of my okay. videos on budget stuff. <laughs> you um, sent them your videos? Oh my god, I didn't know you Okay, that's interesting. 
it was it was one of the ones from before I was a VTuber, so at least it's it's it'll be received at least a little better there. Uh, but <laughs> you don't think that after having a VTuber in this platform that you'll be heard more seriously? So I have I have this thought in my head that even if uh, I were to bring, say, Marcus onto my platform and have an interview with him, which I want to do, uh, I think it would probably not be a good idea for him because it's, it is so easy. It is so easy for a conservative pundit to spin that mm. into, like, some conversation about degeneracy or something. Like, it's very, it's very easy. Uh, so I, I am personally avoiding that one. But me physically going <laughs> to his office and talking with him, that's a thing I can and have done. Um, like, writing your Congress is a is a good thing to do like do that yes going out and 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 picking up a sign protesting go ahead do that but if you if you really have an issue if you really want some kind of change yeah please go to your local representative go to their office talk with their people talk about the things you need done because guess what they're beholden to you you're their constituent yes that's like and that's a thing you can do it is it is surprising how easy it is it is actually never, exactly <laughs> i had never done it before but because i specifically have an issue uh with marjorie herself i want her to not represent me because she represents me mm-hmm. oh, you is cool. you it is it is so easy mm-hmm. to go and talk to your rep and be like hey i have these issues not to mention if you go when there's an event where they're having a lot of people. Um, Don't do that. When, uh, when you're having, when you go when there's an event where there's, uh, the like they've invited the public to come, feet. sit down and talk with the other people who are in your political party who are voting for them and get their opinions too. Like, mm-hmm. Don't just rely on on Twitter and YouTube and and the news to tell you how people in your party feel. Go to the places they're congregating and talk with them. It's a thing you can do. Like, I'm, I'm not doing this as a touch grass moment. I'm doing this because you, we have representatives for a reason. They represent yes. us. Go do the thing. <laughs> um, so this is mostly for the people uh, that are inactive. in, Or uh, how do you say it? What's that word where you, like, do the, a- like, the motion, but maybe not, like, the action? Uh, where you're uh it's something <sighs> signaling or whatever virtue signaling that virtue one signaling, virtue signaling thank you <laughs> virtue signaling. yeah don't, so don't like, just virtue don't, signal on no, this Twitter is more for talking to people who are virtue signaling this is nothing to do with like if you personally don't want to go down there i mean that's fine that's up to you it's your decision what to do if you feel like it's an issue law uh, like if you Feel like whatever dangers are surrounding it, it's it's obviously your own action. Don't feel like us saying these things means like you have to do X Y Z or we're judging you or whatever it is. It's your own life. Obviously, do your own thing. Uh, so you know whatever makes you happy. I know that a lot of people enjoy going to protests. They feel like it's a good way for them to reach out and like uh, be part of something and let like the common people understand like what is actually happening and that it's an issue. Like I get that side. I just also feel that there are other things that are way more um directly related to an action that you can do like there are there are actions you can do and even even like Mm. let's say you personally want to get involved and you're like well i don't think i'll be able to be represented you know in the house i don't think i'll be able to become a house rep for my district Mm -hmm. that is probably true like statistically it is very hard to do and you probably don't have the funding Guess what, though? If you want to run for a local office, you just can. You're like <laughs> your your city you has just publicly can. your city has you publicly available positions that you can run in. If you want to dip your toe into trying to change things around you politically, you can I literally actually... check out what your city uh, is <laughs> having elections for soon Wait, this and is... just go run. <laughs> You don't understand how relevant this is right now because there are actually a lot of people right now in a lot of states and a lot of local areas that are actually running because they are passionate about it now. It is no, I think it's definitely running away from the trend of there being a polished politician that gets run. It's more like people who have some money and some people who are very passionate that come together and can do it now, which I find really, really interesting. And I think part of it, 
you're gonna kill me for saying this part of it yeah. <laughs> part of it i think is actually thanks to trump uh for like showing that it is possible for someone that's not like the typical politician to like get up there oh it's galvanizing <laughs> it's very galvanizing i i will say the uh i will say that uh he to to me uh, I I did not see much difference between him and a typical politician outside of the uh, inability to use euphemisms to the the function of being like a CEO on a board and the function of being a politician. Uh, a lot of the same mechanics are involved. There's a lot of transferable skills from one to the other. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> Joke let's say that you don't. Let's say you don't have the money. Like you're you're worried that you don't right. have the money to campaign, right? Like that's a that's a very obvious issue. Guess what? May I introduce you to the idea of a couple of things here? The first one is the the idea of a PAC. Uh a PAC. So a PAC, Oh no. No, 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 no. Oh no. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um so a the the function of a PAC is to have that funding available for people who run. If you get sponsored for your party, uh, if you get chosen to be a rep for your party, then you will have access to party funding from PAX. Uh, you, you gain that now. Um, let's say you don't have that, though. You're not out of luck still. There are private orgs. Uh, uh-huh. one, of them is run, one of them is run for something. Uh, and their job is to pull, not only pull the funding available for people to run, but also to give them basic training for running for, polit- uh, for politics. Mm-hmm. Like, you've got, if you want to get involved politically, you have a lot of options. There's a lot of stuff you can do. Like, there's a, there's a ton of stuff you can do. Don't, and yeah, Digimouse is right, there's, there's a lot of people who are uh, politically apathetic. Um, and you, you, you really... If you if you have the energy to care about politics, then try to care about politics. I'm not saying alienate your friends who disagree with you. Don't do that. Because guess what? <laughs> you need your friends who disagree with you. You need them. I have just <laughs> talked about this on Twitter. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, exactly. Everyone's like, why don't you just block people that, you know, you don't like and like say the wrong thing? No, like, sometimes they're right. I, you know, it's not about that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Hype Scotch did have a question. There was a why do you say CEO versus uh, versus politics? So mechanically, uh, convincing people on the so Senate much. floor, convincing people on uh, in the House, writing the legislation, um, all of those Hello. skills Welcome are identical Angel. to being a CEO Welcome, or being on a board of directors, Hello. where you are having to appeal to the board. You're having to appeal to more people as a politician because there's voting involved, but the base mechanical functions of writing that legislation, it exists in both fields. You, you, you learn to do it in one, you can learn to do it in the other. Just like working at a, at a fry grill in one restaurant, the equipment <laughs> might be different in another one. But you've what a done great it analogy. That's interesting, right? yeah. You've, you've done it at least once before. You've sat down in front of a group of people and made appeals to them. You've tried to argue that uh, plan A is currently working or not working and what you're going to do about it. That's like, those are things you can, those are things you learn in the business world. And there are things you will learn in the political world and you can move mm-hmm. them from one to the other. So how do you know about this? I'm surprised because I don't think this is something that you would actually normally see in like most of the references or like sources that you can see online. Do you have so, experience working in like a company? So do I have experience working in a company just or as just like in a just in a managerial sense? I see. Um, I've I've been a manager for I don't want to say specifically which places, but I've been a manager for various places. And I've had these conversations with a uh, family of mine who have actually moved up corporate ladder mm-hmm. and seen the things that they've had to do there and spoken with people who have uh, either ran their own companies or just ran their own small businesses and noticed that all of those skills look the same as when I've talked to people who do run for things like uh, representatives. I actually had a. a Oh. About a year and a half ago, uh, I had uh, Brittany Tenenbaum, who was going to be running in the primaries for the Democrats uh, here in Georgia. Uh, she ended up not being able to run because <sighs> I'll go ahead and say it. Um, she does cosplay and <laughs> the Democratic <laughs> Party literally Wait. went. No, we don't like that. I'm don't, not shitting you. Don't, I'm don't not fuck shitting with you. Me. Oh, <laughs> I have that video is up on my channel. I actually did that interview oh with my, my VTuber avatar as well. 
That is hilarious. But she did. Um, they said you do cosplay and you do the cosplay. Word, You're not the allowed. word they used. The word they used in their email was burlesque. <laughs> Um, which I mean, they which, thought that cosplay was burlesque. Oh to be, my and, god, and, this is killing and me. And to be fair, like there's a there's a line where it can be. There's a line where you are <laughs> where you're doing one or the other. Um, but uh, Brittany oh, stopped god. being able to uh, get funded from the Democratic Party as a potential representative because of that. She could have still kept running. She just wouldn't have had the party backing. Um, Interesting. So. When that happened, we talked and I was like, you know, do you want to mm -hmm. vent uh, and maybe give some information about what it's like to, to be in that political sphere uh, on my channel? She said yes. And then I uh, did that interview on my yeah, channel. So I've had her away. You pulled her in, made it into content. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so like the, the reason while I have not personally gone through and done every single one of these things, though I have, I have signed up for run for something so I could get an idea of their infrastructure uh -huh. and I have gone to see my representative. I've done those things, <laughs> but the reason I know more about the, the broader application of these things is because I've talked to people who have had to do it and gotten the information. So from interesting. That. Okay. Like it's, so... it is very, it is remarkably easy. If you just reach out to people, sometimes they respond. <laughs> So I would say that there's a very little barrier to entry if you just want to enter at whatever cost possible. I would say it's actually like, you know how like streaming, like anybody can start streaming, right? Yeah. Technically, anybody can start streaming. Yeah, no, yes. Like you have hit a phone, button. you have, yeah, you just have to hit a button and you can stream. It doesn't mean that people will watch you or anything like that or you're going to win or whatever, but you know, you can start streaming, <laughs> you know? Like, so that that's that's what I always say. Like uh, there, there's very little barrier to a lot of things that, are action items that you can do that you might not realize is actually quite easy. Yeah, it's like it's it feels shockingly like easy. a lot. It is I guess the best word to describe it it's culture shock. Culture, it's culture shock. Culture shock. <laughs> like looking cuz there's cuz there's different ways to look at the political world. If you look at the political world through the eyes of the news, then it's this uh giant polarized machine that is uh, all kinds of terrible things happen behind closed doors. Like that's mm -hmm. the uh, that's the frame you get just by looking through the news. But then when you start talking to representatives, you learn that, yes, that's technically true, but you have access to that world, too. I, I had a conversation with a friend uh, when Roe got overturned mm -hmm. and he said um, now uh, he said that he thought this was just a distraction. He wondered what Biden was doing behind closed uh, behind closed doors, uh, what laws he was putting through. Ow, Which, sneer. for one, kind of explains that he doesn't know the, law, the role of the executive branch. Raise the timer! <laughs> we um, actually are running a little bit lower on the time right now. We have four hours, 39 minutes, and 33 seconds. But uh, when we had that conversation, I said, you know that all of the executive orders, all of the like pieces of paper that he is signing, like all of that is public knowledge, right? And he, he, he legitimately did not know. He did not know <laughs> that you could access all of that information it's not all the information available like yeah shitty things happen behind closed doors in politics Raise that's not news the but there is documentation for most of the major things and you can probably see a lot more than you want to like a lot of the things a lot <laughs> it's of probably the a lot things to parse that through, actually a lot of things that affect you you can publicly go see if a bill is put on the senate floor and the senators are uh, arguing about we only had uh we were only given one day to read through this bill. You've probably heard that a thousand times. I'm Guess sorry. what? Give me a second. Oh my oh, god! Nitty and Gritty City, thank you so much for a thousand bitties! Oh my god, Grumpy Anderson, thank you so much for gifting two subbies! <gasps> oh, Give me out right. a subby to Nature Claws. Thank you so much! Force Vivi to stay here forever. <laughs> so, with a thousand bits, Nitty Gritty City, if you want to, you can create a Nightbot command that will become part of this channel forever. All you have to do is talk to one of our mods right now. Digimouse is free. Uh, you can DM Digimouse or Digimouse can uh, talk to you, whatever it is. Like in the chat is also fine uh, for creating a Nightbot command. So hey. there you go. If you want to put something cursed on there, you can. Oh, Joga's also here. So Joga can also help with that. Wait a there second. You Did you guys start a hype train? <laughs> Thank you so much for yeah. the hype train. Oh, You're on a level two hype train. Ah, thank you guys. Thank you so much for starting a hype train. Okay, hype train. talk to Joga, says Digi. Uh, since uh, Joga will be uh, 
Jogo will be around and Digi is about to leave. So yeah, please talk to Jogo Bogey. So yeah, Ooh. we're in the middle. For those of you that are just joining us, we're talking about um, various things. Basically, uh, education uh, about how our government is sort of working right now and how to get involved. That's the <laughs> current topic. Oh my god, Hobbit, thank you so much for a thousand biddies! Hobbit, you can also create a Nightbot command. So you already know the drill, because I think you have a few that you're saving for later. <laughs> there you go. Again, yeah. I will I'm repeat, everybody keep Phoebe here as long as possible. <laughs> Make streaming their eternal prison. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna imprison me! Oh no. Yes. Oh god. And thanks to the 13th Amendment, you know what that means. I'm kidding. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> All right, so I was thinking, as we're bringing all these things together, uh, we talked about, just as a brief overview, we talked about a little bit about what it just means to have a um, court case show up in the Supreme Court What's and what it means for it to be overturned, uh, and what it means in terms of the different branches of our government and what they sort of functionally do, uh, and then in terms of your role, what you can do. Uh, and specifically, we also talked a little bit about just executive orders in general, because I think that's like a new thing that has become part of the public eye a lot more than usual. So we talked a little bit about what those do and like what the power yeah, behind it is. No and essentially, there is zero power behind a lot of these things. <laughs> it's more like a call to action for things to happen. So um, the things to things to think about. So as we're pulling all this together to a close, we have about ten more minutes in terms oh. of like this section specifically with Neko Sudes. Uh, I was thinking Hello, maybe we can, uh, if there's anything specific that you guys like to ask in the chat, I'll pick like a few things. I'll try to pick things that are um different or that I I found was interesting. So if there's anything that you want to ask me or Neko Sudes, now is the time. Uh, so yeah. For those of you that don't know, Nekosudis is a how do I say this? <laughs> you're not exactly I mean clearly you're kind of like a political VTuber, but like I don't know. I, I feel like it's not just that though. You're kind of like a just a discussion person. <laughs> I guess you gotta talk about all kinds of things. But it's not always politics too. No, it's not it's not always politics. Uh, there's a there's a section of every stream that's dedicated to talking about political stuff specifically. Uh but the, and the majority of the content that goes on my main channel oh, is some flavor yeah. of political. Also, Revelations 1217, then the dragon became furious with a woman <laughs> and went off to make war in the wrath oh of the so, offspring on those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony okay, of Jesus. Okay, okay, okay. And he stood on the sand of the sea. I have a redeem. Hype Scotch, thank you so much for 666 biddies. You are the first person to use this to have me read a Bible verse. And thank you so much for putting the Bible verse here for me to actually... Wait, is there a dragon in the Bible? I do not know this. Okay. Oh, yeah. Revelations 1217. All right. Are you guys ready? <sighs> Sorry. Let me see if I can put on... I'm not sure if this is an appropriate outfit for this. I could read it as <laughs> Okay, here we go. Um, then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off what the fuck to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and hold on to the testimony of Jesus. And he stood on the sand of the sea. There you go. Isn't that, I hope you isn't enjoyed that, that reading. Hype Scotch, isn't that the uh, verse that talks about the harlot oh of Babylon? God. You're wrong. <laughs> I don't know anything about the Bible. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <That's fair. laughs> wow, thank you so much for 10 wow. subs. Holy shit balls. You have triggered a Rick roll. I'm going to play it in just a second. I just want to address one thing before that. Uh, I believe someone was asking, why do you hate MTG? I don't know what MTG is. Oh, I feel like you would Marjorie, know what MTG is. Marjorie Taylor Green. Oh, um, okay, okay. So my my position on Marjorie Taylor Greene, I'll make it very, very brief. Um, I do not want someone representing me that believes that California was lit on fire by Jewish space laser satellites. That is, is that that what? is a those are things that she said. What? And I am not paraphrasing. Oh, I actually did think that it was Magic the Gathering for a second. I was like, there's no way. That's, <laughs> that is like, that's what I usually see a teaching me. I was like, that can't be though, because we like, didn't I talk have, about magic. 
No, we didn't. Uh, but that is <laughs> like, I think I think that sentence probably surmises most of my opinions where she is concerned, because any individual, any individual political disagreement we might have and do have, um, I think they all kind of boil down from that one foundation. A person who believes something that ludicrous will necessarily believe other things that are equally ludicrous because it's within their own personal Overton window. Mm. And that's that that's my issue. I see. OK. So yeah, you there's... feel like because of the extremism it, within some of the views, you're worried that um, there is an issue in terms of like validity to some of the other views that that in my head. Oh, oh my god! It... What? Is it <laughs> yeah, please. Why is this one? This is so freaky. Generals were like those of donkeys, and whose machine is like that of horses. Oh my god! I love this one. Shitting me! I love the Ezekiel, the Ezekiel verse. Oh my god! Okay, all right, all right. I'll do this for you. This for you. Right. <laughs> Ezekiel twenty three twenty to twenty one. There she lusted after her lovers, whose genitals were like those of donkeys, and whose omission was like that of horses. I didn't know they were different. Okay. Uh, so you longed for the lewdness of your youth, when in Egypt your bosom was caressed and your young breasts fondled. <laughs> so right. I, quoted, right. I quoted that verse to a friend of mine. And they literally went, that's not in the Bible. Did they? You made that up. You made that up. You made that up. That's, that's not real. That wasn't in the Bible. And then I had, I had to literally show, show them the them verse. The and I'm like, I'm just like, it's right there. I'm just like, I used to study this because I wanted to be a theologian. I, oh, I can I point to that. some. What? I, really? I, I, grew up, I grew up in a Christian private school. I didn't um, know you were gonna be a th you. You were planning to be a theologian. That's really interesting. Oh, that's why you like, know so much about this stuff as well. That's that was a thing that I wanted to do uh, as a you know as a, as a career at one point um, was you know be a theologian, which can either lead you down the right uh, route of you know being a pastor, or can lead you down the right of being a, a pundit apologist. Like, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things you can. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, functionally, that's what that's, that's what you end up that's being. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I didn't um, even think about. It. Yeah. So, like, we are thirty eight percent of the way to a level five hope train. By the way, choo -choo! I, I know an awkward bit about that book because I used to study it a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know all the really weird shit in it. Okay, like if we were, <laughs> this is a this is a fun one. Um, so you know the 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 Sodom and Gomorrah story, right? Mm. Do you know it? Oh, sorry. Before we get to the end, of this, I do want to get to uh, some of the questions in the chat. Uh, so, yeah. Playout Consoles has a question. Uh, my question is your opinion on how politics are purposely made hard to exclude people from getting more involved. Um, I think that was a little bit roundabout. I think maybe Playout Consoles is talking about how uh, it makes it feel like it's difficult to join in um, politics. Well, I think it's like a gatekeeping. I think a lot of that is on purpose. Um, so there is a there is an effort and there always has been uh, to make it harder to do things like vote uh, in, in my state specifically, there's a laundry list of things that my governor uh, did to make it harder to vote in certain areas uh, of the state. There's been things like redlining that have been used to make it harder to, uh, and gerrymandering that are technically illegal, but are still technically done uh, that have been done to make it harder to gain access to either the funding uh, or the information or even the voting period. Um, <laughs> There's there's always been a concerted effort uh, to make it harder to get involved in politics in the United States to try to make that a thing that is held exclusively by one side. And when I say one side, I'm not saying exclusively held by Republicans or Democrats because they're because they're both responsible for this shit. Um, <laughs> they both have this idea where barrier they, they might be a good idea. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so uh, like there's like some kind of idea of like um, some elitism associated with it. I think culturally yeah. there's definitely that for sure. Um, and Thank then you guys also so much like, for level four hype train. That was 11 subs and 3,432 bits. Thank you. Thank you guys. Choo yeah. choo. Ba, ba, ba. And then there's also issues where when it comes to um, when it comes to our education on how our pol political system works. 
works, we usually get taught that there are the three branches of government, uh, the people who inhabit them, but not really how to become part of that. We're told to vote so other people can do it, which is you know true. Go out, vote, do that. But we're not generally told in public education how to hold those reins of power ourselves. Mm. And again, that's a that is a problem with all sides of the political spectrum. Yeah, that's true. That's and that's actually why I think this section section is so so important that we're talking about right now. Like I said, like there's just a lot of things that just seem like so inaccessible, right? But like it is out there, but we don't teach it that way. We don't teach it in a way that it's supposed to be um accessible to everybody mm. in this way. It's taught that hey, somewhere out there someone is doing this thing and that's sort of what it looks like. You know? How do you feel about non-citizens voting, says King Pluton? It depends. How long have they been here? If you're if you are affected by our laws, my questions then have to be because I can't answer this just with a with a with a quick answer. Mm. My answer has to be a question, which is why is that person not a citizen? Are they here on their three months uh, just you know from another country? You yeah, know, I don't want them voting in our elections. Somebody who's just uh, here for three months and then they're leaving uh, and maybe they're popping back and forth, but they don't have citizenship here. I don't want them voting. Um, but if somebody is has been here for 10 years and they are a citizen in all but legal name and it is just red tape that is preventing them from becoming a citizen, I think that person should have the right to vote. Because there's functionally no difference between that person and somebody who came here and became a citizen two years ago. Like... Mm. There's mechanically no difference, and I'm very utilitarian. Um, my questions will always fall down to, why is this person not a citizen yet? What is preventing them from being it? If it's their personal choice, then okay, cool. You don't want to be a citizen here? Don't vote here. But if they do... Wow, my cat is not enjoying life. Oh, that's your life. cat. <laughs> I yeah, was wondering, I was like, your um, significant other is <laughs> 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 having a wild game over there <laughs> streaming. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But we have we have had instances where like uh, someone has immigrated here from another country. They have gotten married here and they've been here for 10 years. They've had children here uh, who've been here for you know eight years of their life. And this person uh, has been contributing their paycheck to our pool of usable taxes this whole time. And yet. Various bits of legal red tape have stopped them from being able to uh, actually receive United States citizenship in a situation where that happens. You have to make the argument to me why this person shouldn't be voting because there I see no difference between them and me at this point. I understand what you mean. Uh, so, as you know, this is a, a very liberal view. I'm sure there's also some people out there that feel the opposite, which is that since they're not a citizen, they don't pay taxes. There are um, certain things that should make it so that this is like something specific to people that actually have a tied investment with the um, nation that they're living in. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, we are actually rounding about to the end of our time. It is 6.02 p.m. EDT. You're welcome to stay as long as you want. Uh, we have a few people in the waiting room that I'm going to bring in now. If you'd like to stay and continue talking, I'd be happy. Uh, I just might take a little break to grab some food because this is the dinner section uh, of the of the subathon. So I think for me, uh, I do have the tournament to get to that we All talked right! about before. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I am perfectly fine coming on, not later during the subathon itself, but anytime that you want to do something together. I would I'm love to. For it, you know so how much I our, love you. <laughs> as long as our as long as our schedules allow for it. Um, though maybe at one point uh, we can have conversations that are not strictly political. <laughs> <laughs> we can also fuck around. Yes. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll we'll play some we'll play some uh, some game that everybody can cringe at us being bad at. <laughs> True, true. That's very nice. I, I'm sure. Uh, I think a lot of people in my chat very much appreciate the knowledge that you bring, and just the level headedness that you have. I think while talking about a lot of these issues, and a lot of people here, and I've noticed it. Even people who disagree with your um, opinions and different things that you've said, they're still saying because they find it intriguing and they do want to talk to you about it. Yes, apparently you could always discuss Sonic porn. <laughs> 
I mean, apparently that's, that's a common ground for you. I know you like to talk about Sonic in general. That's like a huge. You have a whole YouTube channel dedicated to just like Sonic talk. So like yep. that is definitely like a huge thing. I don't know anything about Sonic <laughs> besides the fact that there's like some weird memes out there with Sonic. <laughs> that's that's basically all I know. Every once in a while, once in a while, I see a weird weird picture, and I know Sora's Digital also loves Sonic, so I'm sure you guys can talk about that as well. Yeah. Um. I will uh, say as well, if any if anybody has questions that I wasn't able to answer during this, mm -hmm. since we didn't have a whole lot of time for that part, um, my DMs are always open. That's just a policy I've had since the beginning of, of whenever I've done my stuff. Um, I will say, if you get weird by DMs, I will be blocking you instantly. Uh, but <laughs> that, that... Don't forget to treat people with respect, especially when you're in a private space with them, like a DM, and you're talking to them. Just don't forget that, you know, they're a person. <laughs> Don't get weird. Don't get creepy. Don't ask for any personal information. Uh, please don't bother them all the time. They have every right to block you or not answer you at any given time. That is their right, okay? So don't push, okay? I know that it's easy to push when you feel very passionate about something. But just try to keep that in mind that, you know, we're also people that <laughs> have other wants and needs besides just talking to you. Okay. So yeah, yeah. as, as Sudis has said, uh, he said that his DMs are open, so you're welcome to uh, talk to him. I believe the Twitch DMs is what you're talking about. Is that right? Uh, Twitch DMs, you could do it on Discord. You could do it on, on Twitter. Do you, mind, it do you want me to share like your Discord ID or something? Uh, if you just like, if you just want to go like at Skeptic on Twitter, like that's probably the oh, easiest okay, place. Okay, okay, okay. The easiest place is is um. It's Twitter then. So if you go to twitter.com, let me just write it out. Twitter.com slash Nekosudis, I believe. Yeah. I think that should be right. Yeah. You can go there. Oh, wait. Is that not? Oh, no. Did I write it wrong? Is there an underscore somewhere? Fuck. No, just <laughs> the Twitter is just at Surus Skeptic. Oh, Skeptic. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. Sorry. I wrote it out wrong. Twitter.com. Let me go. I'm t I'm totally doing it the wrong way, which is writing it out manually. <laughs> hey, it works. Bro. It's like a link now. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, my a, god! I do wanna, I do thank you. Oh for my god! I can't. Off. Okay, fuck it. I'm, I'm I'm looking it up because I can't do this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I so bad at this? Okay, let go see a skeptic. In that. Is it Sudis skeptic? Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Yeah, okay, thank you. There you go. I can't, you did it. Why am I so bad? Ignore the other ones. They weren't there. Okay, <laughs> there. It's Sudis skeptic. <laughs> Shut up, Leo Castles. We're not talking about this. Okay, everybody, we're gonna wave goodbye. Thank you so much for joining me for this time. It was so enjoyable. The time just flew by. It always flies by when I'm talking to you. So I, I would be so happy to come on again just to chill and play games. We don't have to do like, you know, real stuff, <laughs> real heavy stuff. We can take a we can take a break from all these kinds of things and just chill with each other, which we haven't really done. I mean, in DMs we do, but yeah, <laughs> but, but every time we're on stream, I'm always like, <laughs> These kinds of things. Uh, so, yeah, everybody wave <laughs> goodbye. We had a lot of good times, right? Uh, we wish you all the best. And uh, I'm definitely going to see you again sometime. I, I know we are. I can't imagine not being in contact with you. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, now we're going to be bringing in our next people.